What's going on, everybody? My name is Brandon. This is Potty Mouth Sports, your spot for uncensored, unfiltered sports opinions. Today, we got a bombshell story. Um, we recently just dropped season two, the premiere, I guess you can call it, first episode on season two of Zooming with the Boys. We were going over all the NFL playoff talk, everything that we've missed in the time that we've taken our break. Now that we're back, there is a shit ton of information to share with everybody to talk about. And this one in particular, we initially spoke about it on episode 44 of Zooming with the Boys, but I decided to cut out that and do a whole video on it because, I mean, it's fucking huge and it involves my Miami Dolphins, my beloved Miami Dolphins. Brian Flores is filing a class action lawsuit against the NFL, the Miami Dolphins, the Denver Broncos, and the New York Giants, alleging racism in their hiring practices for coaching positions, also alleging considerable misconduct done by Miami Dolphins owner Stephen Ross. Uh, he filed all these motions in a Manhattan courtroom yesterday. I guess since this video is coming out on Thursday, yesterday, two days ago, sorry, two days ago on Tuesday, filed this in court, a um, lot to fucking unpack. So I'm just going to kind of pick at the big things that the Flores lawsuit kind of uh, stipulated. Uh, Flores got hired, as everyone knows, as the Miami Dolphins head coach back in the 2019 season. Um, he is alleging that Miami Dolphins owner Stephen Ross offered Flores $100,000 for every single loss the Miami Dolphins put on the board that year. Basically, Stephen Ross was bribing or allegedly bribing Brian Flores to tank to uh, gain draft position in the 2020 NFL draft. As everyone knows, in the 2020 NFL draft, the Miami Dolphins carried three first round picks, which included uh, the fifth pick, which in inevitably was uh, to attack of Aloha, our quarterback. Um, kind of fucked up if that's true, but uh, we'll talk about everything. I just kind of want to get the, the allegations out of the way and then we'll talk about everything. Um, also in the winter of 2020, I'm going to assume this was before the draft after the season, potentially even maybe bef before the season concluded, um, Steven Ross basically was trying to trick Brian Flores allegedly into a yacht meeting with a prominent quarterback. That is what the uh, lawsuit states. That is Brian Flores' side. Um, it is kind of getting spilled out by several sources. I know everyone's getting tired of hearing that word. But, uh, I mean, there's no facts until the facts present themselves. Basically, the streets are talking, and it was either Deshaun Watson or Tom Brady who was on the yacht that Stephen Ross wanted Brian Flores to uh, attend the meeting of. Um, is there any grounds to that? No. Is there any proof of that? No. Have they settled anything? This is just an allegation. This is just an allegation that Brian Flores is alleging or accusing uh, Stephen Ross of doing. Can I see it? Yeah. Do I believe it? No. I don't believe anything until I see factual information. So, again, just an allegation. Third allegation. During his head coaching interview with the Denver Broncos in this I guess, off season or, you know, this time right now where everyone's kind of picking up on head coaches as teams kind of filter out of the playoffs. Brian Flores had a head coaching interview with the Denver Broncos. CEO John Ellis and prominent quarterback for the Denver Broncos in the past, John Elway, arrived an hour late, allegedly, to the interview and appeared intoxicated, according to Brian Flores. Um, so that's just kind of giving, um, 
I guess, legs to the argument that they weren't taking the interview process seriously because of the Rooney rule, which we will get into here in a minute. But um, he's just trying to get legs for this argument that uh, because he's an African-American coach that no one's really taking him seriously and nobody wants him. They're just kind of interviewing him because they have to, according to the Rooney rule. Fourth allegation, probably the biggest one yet. Actually, this isn't even an allegation. It's either a doctored text or it's an actual text or it is a text that was already like kind of fabricated. Both parties already knew what they were going to say. But Bill Belichick texted Brian Flores congratulating him on obtaining the New York Giants head coaching position, thinking he was texting Brian DeBall who actually got the head coaching position, actually got hired by the New York Giants to be the head coach, which was the Buffalo Bills offensive coordinator in this last season. Um, The text leaked. I mean, seems a bit fishy, but uh, in my opinion, seems a bit fishy, kind of. I don't know any person that signs a text at the end, um, but Bill Belichick initialed it at the end, B.B., um, basically, yeah, it's exactly what I said. Bill Belichick was congratulating Brian Flores thinking he was Brian DeBall, but, uh, it was actually Flo. Flo questioned him asking, do you think you're talking to Brian DeBall or Brian Flores? And that's when Bill Belichick allegedly looked and saw that he was actually talking to Brian Flores, admitting that he fucked up and I'm sorry, but I'm sorry, Brian, and all this. Obviously, anybody could have planned this text. You could have just called Bill Belichick, told him exactly what to write, and you could have write it, and you guys could have had a fabricated conversation. I don't put anything past anybody. Um, Again, I don't really know any person on the face of this earth that would initial their last text. Kind of fucking weird, especially with Bill Belichick and all the bullshit the New England Patriots have done in the past with the flake gate and all that bullshit. I don't really put anything past Bill Belichick and the fact that they've already had close relations in the past, seeing as Brian Flores was a linebacker coordinator for New England in the past, in past Super Bowl uh, winning seasons. So, I mean, he still has New England ties. I think him and Bill are still semi-close, but um, I guess we'll just kind of rip through everything. I'll tell you my opinion on everything. Um, the whole Ross thing, I find it very interesting, uh, as a Miami Dolphins fan, I mean, very interesting. I'm very intrigued to see how that's actually going to play out and what the facts are of that whole situation. If it turns out to be true that Steven Ross bribed Brian Flores, a hundred thousand dollars a game to lose to kind of tank and get a higher draft position. I think it's inevitable that Steven Ross is going to be called maybe by the NFL, especially by the Miami Dolphins fans and organization to sell the team. I think it's just inevitable. I think everyone's kind of tired of the direction Stephen Ross is taking the team. And I don't really think we need that kind of bullshit, that kind of garbage in our organization. I just hope that if he were to sell the team, he sells it to somebody um, respectable, but uh People that do particular Miami Dolphins only content on YouTube that I watch and that cover the Miami Dolphins, just solely Miami Dolphins news, um, have already stated that it's going to be basically a hand-me-down sale to somebody that Stephen Ross is connected with who has no background knowledge of football whatsoever. So, I mean, not much hope. Do we take the lesser of two evils and keep Stephen Ross around, let him pay fines and penalties and draft stock for the mistakes? Maybe if we have to go down that road, but it's not looking good for the Finns. Um, I am intrigued to find out who this prom, uh, prominent quarterback is that Stephen Ross was kind of dangling in front of Brian Flores's face, tampering uh, with, well, violating tampering rules in the NFL. Um, because their contract had not been complete with their team at the particular time, and they were uh, destined to be a free agent by the end of that season. So I'm intrigued to get the name of that. I'm intrigued to see if that name will ever be leaked. If it, I mean, Deshaun, if it's Deshaun, then basically 
Stephen Ross has flipped this whole script on Brian Flores saying that Brian Flores uh, never wanted to uh, and always wanted Deshaun. That would flip the script and that would mean Stephen Ross and Chris Greer would have wanted Watson this whole time and Flores wanted Tua or was content with Tua, even though Tua and Brian Flores have been known to not get along. Tua has came out public. Miami Dolphins players have came out publicly and stated that Tua and him did not have a great relationship and that Brian Flores kind of was a dick to Tua in the locker room at halftime uh, in, in a couple games. So it's just kind of a he said, she said thing right now. It's really fresh. Interesting. Uh, what I think about the Broncos interview, I mean, that kind of gives legs to Brian Flores' argument of this whole Rooney rule, which the Rooney rule is basically for a head coach opening or job offering, you have to interview an African-American or a minority uh, candidate. It has to be done. It has to be at least one. And teams will entertain an interview just because of the Rooney rule, because they don't want to be fined. Uh, the da Detroit Lions in 2003 did not interview a minority uh, prospect coach and were fined $200,000 by the league. That was 2003. It would probably be six or 700,000 at this point, I would say at least five or 600,000. Uh, fine at this point which no team really wants to pay um, so they kind of entertain the minority interview knowing that they already have a guy in their back pocket that they're interested in the rule just kind of in my opinion is bullshit uh, just hired the best candidate uh, regardless of race but um, I mean there's now one uh, one or two head coaches in the NFL now that are african-american one is soleil on the jets but i don't even know if he's still a coach i don't keep up with the fucking new york jets news because fuck that team and mike tomlin obviously for the uh, pittsburgh steelers and mike tomlin's been a coach in the nfl for the last two uh 20 years so just i don't know the league's gotta come up with a new strategy other than the rooney rule i think i think the rooney rule <clears throat> just is a means is just a sorry attempt at an answer to a problem. Um, obviously I agree that diversification can only be a bonus in any job field and um, or any field of employment. So I don't know the NFL, like, fuck, I'm not going to try and say that they're racist, but I mean, take a look from the outside looking in and you can make your own uh, assumption. Other than that, really, I mean, the Belichick thing kind of already told you what I thought about that. I mean, I, I can see how that would be fabricated, especially with Bill and nobody fucking signs their texts. I just think this whole thing was an absolute fucking piss missile nuke that just got dropped. Um, if, I guess if it comes out that Tom Brady was the uh, potential tampering quarterback, very interesting. That would be very, very interesting because he was a member of the New England Patriots because this was before, this was right before he signed with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in 2020. So that would be very intriguing to know that he would be entertaining a basically violating tampering rules in the league to potentially sign a contract with a division rival. Yeah, that would be pretty fucked up. And of course, as we all know, Tom Brady announced his retirement the same day that this Brian Flores lawsuit came out. So, I mean, it sounds like a little bit too good to be true that it would be Brady and like, Oh, he's just going to retire. And then this lawsuit comes out and maybe he's public enemy. Number one in that whole tampering allegation that it just seems a little too far fetched in my opinion. I mean, but then again, on the other hand, Tom is coming off a 5,300 yard season losing 
in the AFC or the NFC divisional round and leading the league in passing touchdowns and is also an MVP candidate at 44 years old. Uh, everyone, I think, can agree that if Tom wanted to play one more season, he would be physically capable of doing so. Um, but I'm not going to really take that leap. I'm not going to reach at this point. We're just going to wait for more information to come out. This is going to be a fucking process. Um, it's going to be the biggest fucking news in the league until the Super Bowl. Everyone's going to get one night to take a break. And then it's just going to be full fledged after that. And that's what everyone's going to be talking about up until big names in the off season get signed, traded and the regular shit that goes on in the off season. But this will always be in the back pocket. This will always be here until the suit is either settled, AKA they pay off Brian Flores for an undisclosed amount because we won't know how much he gets paid or the league fights it. And we go to war. Brian Flores goes to war. Um, the NFL has already released a statement stating they will defend against these claims. And they state that these claims do not have any merit. So it's looking like the gloves are going to come off, but I mean, the NFL could just be bluffing and then Brian Flores can call their bluff and Everyone knows how the legal process goes. It's just a bunch of bluff bluff until somebody wants to pay, knowing that they can't fight anymore. It's basically just calling bluffs until people get an understanding of their enemy's hand. So just fuck, man. Interesting shit. I feel bad for fellow Miami Dolphins fans. I mean, the Giants got pulled into this bullshit too. The Broncos got pulled into this bullshit too. Uh, I don't want this to come off as me not believing Brian Flores, not uh, agreeing with his fight, because, I mean, when you do a lawsuit like this, you are committing career suicide. You will, Brian Flores will probably never coach in this league ever again because of this. Look at Colin Kaepernick. Colin Kaepernick fought for his cause and has not touched the field in an NFL game since. And I think the same thing's going to happen with Flores. I think Flores is just going to cash out, fight this fight for the betterment of the rest of the African-American coordinators, head coaches, prospect head coaches, or aspiring head coaches and coordinators and GMs and just other organizational positions. So, I mean, very courageous of Brian Flores. Uh, I not going to say I disagreed with the firing of him from the Miami Dolphins. I don't think that had anything to do with race, but if it comes out that it has to do with this, then I mean, it ties in with everything. So uh, Chris Greer would be wrong for doing that. And Steven Ross would be wrong for doing that as well. So I guess we just got to sit, sit tight, wait for the facts to come out and take it all from there, man. Bad day to be a Finns fan, man. The fucking circus continues. All we're trying to do is get a fucking winning record, get into the playoffs and fucking throw a ball around and see what happens. And I mean, we just, we keep taking steps up and two, three steps back, man. So Finns army, uh, Giants fans, Broncos fans, NFL fans in general. Let me know what you think in the comments below this whole Brian Flores debacle circus that we're about to embark on for the next year plus. And, uh, if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. Keep up to date with what we're doing. Um, got a lot of fucking content coming. Season two under wraps. Uh, season two launching right now, I should say. Not even under wraps. We're, we haven't even gotten fucking started yet. And we got so much fucking shit to talk about. It's insane. Like, we just came out with the season two premiere. And already I have to do a separate video for this Flores drama because... Shit's getting insane. We got to get into basketball again. We got to get into baseball again right around the corner. It's a fucking lockout. Boys, a lot of shit going down, and we're here for it all. Let us know in the comments below what you think. Love you all. Fins up, baby.